I've seen far too many videos of the Thomas tube holder placed upside down, and a lot of instructors demonstrating the wrong technique with securing this device. In this video, I'd like to show you how to place Thomas tube holder properly utilizing the manufacturer's guidelines. Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to place the Thomas tube holder correctly. So in my hand, I'm holding a, a Thomas tube holder made by Lairdall, and far too often I see this placed inappropriately, and oftentimes I see it on YouTube demonstrated inappropriately. So whenever you get a new piece of equipment, first thing to do is consult with manufacturer's guidelines and uh, see how the proper placement should be. Uh, I will put a link to this in the description below. So let me just go over some of the important parts of this device. So this opening here is called the mouthpiece aperture. And whenever you're placing this uh, on the patient, it should always face towards the feet. And if anyone tells you it should face upside down, and you should be able to read Thomas uh, uh, legibly, they do not know what they're talking about. So send them the link to this video and have them read the instructions, which I will put in the description below. Now, so as we said, this mouthpiece aperture should always face towards the patient's feet. The next part here, you notice if I turn this upside down, it looks like a V, and this is called a V vudge. And we're going to place our tube into this position when we're going to secure it. Now, what type of tubes can this device accommodate? Well. Certainly, it's made for the endotracheal tube, but in addition, it can uh, be used for any superglottic airway device, such as a king tube, a combi tube, and an LMA. So any of these devices uh, will work. Now, the other piece that I want to uh, show you here at the bottom, we have a bite block. And this is important that if the patient's uh, consciousness goes up and he starts to uh, try to close the mouth, you will not have a kink on the tube. So bite block prevents the closure of the teeth and no kinking of your tube. The next piece I will talk about is this uh, slider, uh, which is very important for us. And it will assist you to essentially to guide this Velcro and, and strap through this piece here. Uh, whenever it, you get a brand new device, it will help the slider on it. And the last part is this uh, screw clamp. And the screw clamp is the last piece to be uh, adjusted. And the reason for this is as follows. When you place this on the patient and you are going to go ahead if you did it inappropriately and you put the screw in and now it's holding your tube in place and then you wanna adjust your Velcro around the patient's head, you will essentially pull on the tube and potentially dislodge it or essentially move it from the proper position. So the slider clamp is uh, always gonna be the last piece uh, to be adjusted. So let me show you how I will secure it. So first I will place this under my patient's head, right under the neck. And so I have access to it. The slider clamp is on this side. Uh, if you wanna see, uh, the instruction on intubation, uh, I will have a link to my video showing that, but we're going to say we already pre the patient, we placed him on the water, and we observed his sat and uh, entitled CO2, and now we're ready for the procedure. So now I'm going to go ahead and intubate the patient. I saw the tube go through the vocal cords. I'm going to go ahead and inflate my pilot balloon, remove my stylus, and what I'm going to do is connect my entitled CO2, verify placement before I secure this device. So verify with objective data, and then I'm going to auscultate my long sounds to get my subjective data. So long sounds and entitled CO2. The next thing is we teach you to hold the tube in place. And this is important for an tracheal tube because I went through a lot of steps, had to position the head, had to find my landmarks, use the laryngoscope, elevate the tongue, right? Uh, find the laryngeal inlet and place this. So it was a lot of steps in addition to pre and I do not want to lose the position. However, whenever you're inserting a supraglottic airway device, you don't have to hold on the tube. You could let go because it sits in the esophagus most of the time. And two, whenever you inflate the cuff, you want it to take the natural shape of the oral pharynx. So for supraglottic, you don't have to hold it. For this, you have to hold it. The next thing, as I said, I'm going to first slide the tube into my V wedge. Once the V wedge is in place, I'm going to go ahead carefully, place the bite block into the patient's mouth, making sure that the lips or any soft tissues do not become obstructed because I don't want any damage to my soft tissues, right? The bite block is now firmly seated. I then going to go ahead and find my slider clamp and I'm going to slide it like so. Once I have slide my slider clamp, I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my slider clamp and I'm going to secure my tube. Notice I do not yet engage my screw clamp. I want to adjust my Velcro so it's tightly snug on the patient. Then I'm going to go ahead and secure my slider clamp. 
And I want to make sure I use just enough pressure, right, that it's in place, but not so much pressure that I'm kinking the endotracheal tube. Once this is in place and I'm satisfied with everything, I'm going to reconfirm my antidal CO2 and lung sounds for this patient, uh, making sure everything is in uh, correct order. Now that you've seen in-person demonstration, I'd like to highlight some of the rationale why we place the device the way the manufacturers has described it. So first of all, if you look at this point, the suction port, the suction port, it's, it's a large opening. Uh, and why is it the large opening need to be facing towards the patient's feet? And the reason for that, so that you have an easy access with a yank hour or a bigger size uh, suction tubing, such as to counsel suction. And this will facilitate an easy entrance to, the, to your uh, oral pharynx, essentially, if you place the device properly. Now, here you see I'm using a yank hour in order to suction the patient's mouth. And if you pay attention, I have placed the Thomas tube holder facing uh, towards the patient's feet. So the mouthpiece aperture is facing towards the feet. This facilitates an easy entry of a yank hour or the council catheter with a wide bore opening. That makes it easier for you to suction the patient's mouth. Now, if you place it upside down, you can see that I cannot have my yank hour enter the mouth. The screw clamp is precluding me from essentially inserting this device in order to suction the patient's mouth. This is why it's important to place the mouthpiece aperture facing towards the patient's feet so that you have easy entry with your suction equipment. Now, another point that I like to make is um, a lot of instructors think that when you place this device, you should be able to read Thomas legibly so that it's upside down. And here you see Thomas uh, is uh, read legibly. However, the problem with this is that, first of all, you're not following manufacturer's guidelines as I just described it previously. And two, you, are, you would not be able to suction the mouth um, or the pharynx utilizing yank or rigid suction because that screw clamp is precluding you from placing it. So whenever uh, an instructor tells you you should be able to read the Thomas tube um, um, legibly that's printed here, so it should be pointing towards the patient's face, just send them the link to this video and certainly the manufacturer's uh, guidelines, which I'll have linked uh, in this video. So once again, right, once this device is placed appropriately, uh, it's going to look like the image on the left hand side with the mouthpiece aperture facing towards the feet. And I repeat, never ever should it face uh, the patient's head like you see on the picture on the right. So always place it per the manufacturer's guidelines and there's always a good rationale why it should be facing towards the patient's feet. Right? And here you see the mannequin with the appropriately uh, placed Thomas tube holder with the mouthpiece aperture facing towards the feet. Next thing I would like to talk about is the indication for the use. As I outlined, not only can you use it with the endotracheal tube, you can also use it with any type of supraglottic airway devices, such as an LMA, um, combi tube, king tube, and I have an excellent video of how to place all these devices, and I'll link it here in the description below. Its intended use is for people or persons who are at least eight years of age. They make a different size for a pediatric that can be used for less than eight years old, and it's intended use is less than 24 hours. Uh, the other important thing is that it, this device secures the endotracheal tube or supraglottic airway device so that there's less chance of accidental extubation. So someone can essentially pull on the tube or a patient can, uh, if they regain level of consciousness, they may try to pull on the tube. So this device, if secured properly, will essentially prevent the accidental uh, dislodgement of this tube. So here you see the image that they supply in your instruction manual. So step one is you wanna make sure that the mouthpiece aperture is facing towards the patient feet. Number two, what you're going to do is then you're going to slide the tube into the V wedge. That's that side position where you see a V. Number three, you're going to essentially use that uh, slide stick to run your um, essentially uh, Velcro strap around the patient's head uh, and then utilize this slide stick to assist with that. Number four, you no longer need the slide six, so you're going to remove it and secure the Velcro. Here I like to point out that you want to secure the Velcro on both sides prior to securing the screw clamp. The screw clamp, which is number five, would be the last piece uh, to secure your endotracheal tube. Once it's all in place, again, you're going to reconfirm your tube placement with endo endotracheal intubation, you're going to use antidal CO2, and with all supraglottic devices, you're going to use antidal CO2, and you're going to auscultate for your... Um, subjective data on your lung sounds and negative epigastric sounds. 
and this is another image this is an updated instructor manual they made it even more simpler so that uh, anyone can utilize this device just by looking at this graphic and again all the steps that i outlined you see here right and again point your attention that the mouthpiece aperture is facing towards the feet and this is all the steps that you can find in your instruction manual which i just went over and uh, i utilize this whenever i'm inserting this device i follow these steps one through five and i don't deviate from the manufacturer's guidelines and I advise you to do the same